Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share our channel with your network. So you know how I'm always looking for something fun and different. Oh my gosh, I outdid myself today. Do you know in commercials where you hear that voice in the background that says, and this and that, and blah, 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 blah. <gasps> They're called voice actors. I know, who knew? And I have one with us today. Y'all, please welcome Garrett Thompson. Hi, Garrett. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Very excited to be speaking with you. I'm excited to have you because voice acting, voice overs, voice blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. No one knows anything about it. We hear <laughs> it. But we don't know that it's a real person and not a recording. Garrett, what is a voice actor? Yeah, that's a very good question. And it kind of, we're people that wear lots of hats. I mean, we like the the boiled down version is um, whenever someone needs any type of words spoken over their video for radio commercials, whatever it may be. I mean, toys in the supermarket, it can be anything. The It's a very broad gamut. That's what we do. We are, we get behind a microphone and we say the words that they want us to say in different crazy voices sometimes and sometimes just normal and um, to get people what, you know, what voices they need to be heard to tell people stories and to um, share people what people need to be shared. That is, to me, that is just so interesting because, you know, okay, so you have a voice, I have a voice, anybody else has a voice. What sure. makes a voice actor different than some random guy on the street who can just talk? Yeah, that's a very good question. It's um, in voice acting, there is a lot of considerations that people don't really realize. So there's a lot of um, of practice that goes into knowing how to deliver a script in a way that is that fits for the genre. So the way that I'm talking right now is really how a lot of people want to hear their commercials these days. They want to hear something that is very conversational, but you know, 20 years ago, that's not how it was. They wanted the announcer voice and they wanted, and that may come back, who knows? And how you read an audiobook is very different than how you would present a commercial. And so it's really, there are tons of people who have great voices. It's a matter of figuring out and learning how to leverage that voice in order to, present information the way that they, it should be presented for the most accessible um, and, and the greatest audience reach, if you will. It's um, It really takes a lot of, of practice and a lot of trial and error and a lot of um, input. It, it's great to have, um, I have several mentors that have helped me along the way that is um, helped me get to where I am now to be the voice actor that I am that's more than just a voice. Okay. That, you know, you said something, you know, audiobooks. So I'm a huge audiobook fan. And then you said the announcer voice. And then, you know, it makes me think of, you know, back in the day, everybody that had that radio sounding voice, mm -hmm. you just naturally assumed was a voice actor. And what you're saying is that may not necessarily be true. Well, in like back in the day, all of those voice actors originally, they were um, a lot of people came from other forms of media. So it was a lot of stage. It was a lot of film. It was a lot of um, and then people kind of there. There were these voice actors that really became the quintessential voice. They they are kind of who set the bar, who set the standard. And then it kind of evolved from there. And um, a lot of that has been changing because people want that that connection. Mm -hmm. is what a lot of voiceover the industry is really going um that's that's the route that everyone's wanting because you don't want to be felt like you're being talked at you want to be felt like you're being talked with and so that is something that's really important in voice acting is is finding being able to find that connection which makes it a lot more accessible but it's also a lot easier said than done when you actually get in front of a microphone um that you're you're just talking in front of a little a little tube um it's it's hard to actually sound like you're talking to someone so that's a lot of what the um the craft comes into play is being able to do that um when you need to and sometimes you want to have that over the top sound and right. just finding said, that balance yeah you said practice you know i we all in you know in theory practice our voices why because we all have voicemail 
and everybody redoes their voicemail 1500 times, you know, <laughs> hi, hi, hi. And then you see in the movies where, you know, somebody's standing in front of the mirror waiting to meet somebody and they're practicing their, their hey, how you doing? <clears throat> hi, how are you? Ah, huh, ha, you know, it, do you go through that as well when you're practicing or when you get a script, does somebody say, we want you to sound like this? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I practice all the time. I'm constantly like figuring out different voices, talking to myself. And when I get a script, one of the first processes is reading it through once or twice because you never, because you don't know what it's going to sound like. And there are certain things that, you know, so sometimes cadence is, is weird and how people write and how people talk are very different. And so figuring out um, uh, very often you'll input extra punctuation in order to make it flow better or whatever it may be. And so absolutely, I'm always practicing weird voices and even just normal voices because like it, it's very, you, it takes a while to get used to hearing yourself back. Yeah. And so that I have to do quite often is, is knowing like, okay, this is what it's going to be. And even in normal stuff, when I'm not doing voice acting, like before I jump on a phone call, I'm always like, okay, planning out what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, because it's it's weird. It, it's there's a lot you have to think about, and when I have to like come up with it on my own, it's it's strange. So, to answer your question, yes, I am always practicing right before I start a read, whatever it may be. I always try to go over it a couple times so I'm not reading it cold, um, because then I mean it's either do that or do three or four takes, which is essentially just recording those practices. So it's easy. I I prefer to read it without the mic running. Yeah. Um, a couple times so I only have to record it two or three times instead of you know four or five times because I was practicing um, on the mic it's so funny so you said funny voices okay to me you have a radio guy voice you know you. you're welcome I think that's a compliment yes so 100%. what other voices do you because your voice is, is pretty deep Garrett mm -hmm. and then you, you you know you're a man so you sound like a guy and then That's you good. have that radio sound. Yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> what other voices do you do? Yeah, that's a very good question. And so as a voice actor, I kind of have my kind of bag of tricks. So my natural voice is very much in this baritone. It's my normal speaking voice. But then sometimes when you want to sound a little bit younger, you just kind of put it on just a little bit higher. It doesn't have to sound necessarily any different, but it's just you put a little bit more energy into it, and that's what it is. Wow. And then... So that's a very common commercial read is the is a little bit younger kind of guy next door. And then, of course, that's not always what it's going to be. And so whenever I want to bring that into like a cartoony land type world, um, just adding some inflection on that to make it a little bit more over the top. So I have characters that are really nervous all the time and it's still this kind of high pitch, but it also he goes up and down a lot because he's like, he's not quite sure of himself and he doesn't really know what he's going on. And so it's those types of things. It's finding there are, there are several unique aspects of the voice that you can use and mix and match to really do anything you need. Yeah. And so yeah. you play with pitch, you play with tempo, you play with grit. So if you want, you really got to get down in the throat. And you can keep it really nice and gruff for different characters, whatever it may be. And so it's those types of things is to be able to kind of jump in and out um, in to uh, achieve different characters. That what you just did, I was giggling because I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, <laughs> when, when people are talking, we do that. OK, so I'm a speaker and as speakers, we do different things, but we work more with, like you said, the pitch and the cadence of a thing, but not so much. The change in our voices, you know, yeah, we'll go faster to show some um, excitement. Yeah, we'll go slower, put a catch in your voice to show emotion. But what you just did, we're different people. I think that's a disorder. I'm just <laughs> it, I mean, it, when you start hearing them in your head before, then it gets a little concerning. But when you can turn them off, it's OK. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, so I'm not good. quite there yet. I'm okay. almost. OK, so we're good. So Garrett, how did you get started in voice acting? Did Were you at the grocery store talking to yourself, you know, what we do, and somebody said, oh my gosh, I need you on a commercial? So um, that's a great question. So in high school, I grew up, um, I grew up in music. And so music was my big thing. I, I'm a viola player, I'm a composer. And so that was my big... Um... Garrett, I have to stop you right here. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody where you're from. 
I'm from El Paso, Texas. Say it out loud in the 915. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm born and raised in El Paso. I'm an El Paso boy through and through. Um, and it's, yeah, it, like a lot of what I am today is owed to being is to everything I did in El Paso. El Paso is I absolutely love, love getting there as often as I can. And so growing up in El Paso, El Paso is a great music community. And so I went originally went to school for music, um, did a lot of acting in high school as well um, through in and around El Paso. And then um, right out of college, I got a job as a resident composer and actor at a children's theater in South Korea. <laughs> and so, wow. yeah. It it was wild. It, it was it was an absolute dream job. And so part of that was in writing all the music um, for the shows, I was also responsible for recording the scratch vocals for approval from like the directors and creative producers and all that kind of stuff. And so um, it was me and one other composer working on it. And so she would do all of the girl voices. I would do all the guy voices. So I was doing three or four different voices so we could hear what these were. And coming out of that job, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next, what my process was. And in college, um, I got my degree actually in film, film with a minor in composition. And part of that was I wanted to work with motion capture. Mm. Um, and so right before, like in the in like the few months between college and moving to Korea, I was in um, L.A. and I took some classes in motion capture and everyone there was a voice actor. And I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. So coming out of Korea, I was like, what am I going to do? And based on how much I enjoyed being behind the mic for those recordings, the fact that everyone in those motion capture classes were already voice actors and that I had a, a built out voice. I, I knew what I was doing with my voice. I thought that I, that's something that would be worth pursuing. That's something that you can do from anywhere. Um, it is something that's very versatile, very easy to kind of work from home, but be benefited from being in a bigger market. And so I moved back to El Paso and I started working as a voice actor, taking classes from a studio in New York and getting my demos produced and everything there. So, um, so yeah, so it was a big, long journey right. um, to get to where it was, but it all kind of made sense. I had a really good ear from all my musical training. I had good technical knowledge from my film background. I knew that it was a stepping stone to something that I wanted to do in addition to voice acting. And it was, um, and I realized that I had an act for it and really enjoyed it because of my time in Korea. So it it all worked out really, really well. Everybody has a journey. So let me ask you, so someone's listening to this right now and they're like, I think I want to do that too. Where mm -hmm. would you recommend someone get started to be a voice actor? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say just like the easiest thing is start recording yourself, start recording yourself and really Anal like analyzing it, listening back, saying it's like, okay, well, this is better. This could be worse. Like, this is a, this is great, but this area could be better. That it's. I think I'm always a huge proponent for, um, for self, um, self critiquing. It's. I think it's a really helpful part of the process. And once you're able to do that and feel a little confident, then start seeking out um, places to get a demo produced. So. I worked with a studio in New York. There are studios all over LA. There's some great people. Um, be very careful about who you look for because while there are many um, great places, there are also many places that are not so great. And so make sure you do your research, listen to demos that they have produced for other people huh. and try to find ones that, um, that you think your voice would fit as well and then try to work with those people. Um, and then just start networking. It's all about who you know and about being just a nice person to people when you are networking and they'll remember you and they'll remember your voice and um, and being able to, you know, send out those demos to whoever um, whoever might need it and um, not being afraid to cold call and cold email. And mm -hmm. um, it's you just, just it's, it's a business. Then. Yeah, it, it's a business and it's 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 marketing, it's sales and, and just get used to that. And then what you're selling is your voice. Yeah. So is it lucrative? I mean, because we all, you know, everyone's seeking to be rich by like next week, Wednesday. So yeah. is being a voice actor lucrative or is it something more like a side hustle and just it is what it is? It it can be very lucrative. Yes, Um, it's the what people like the most visual that people have on voice acting is they all think of cartoons because that's the classic example. And in reality, that's one of 
the lower paying sides of things until you're like really, really upper level. I mean, there's like a dozen voice actors that do everything and that's what they are. The real lucrative part of voice acting is the commercials and e-learning and other things that you don't necessarily think about, but everyone always needs. Um, and so there are lots of resources to figure out kind of what what the rates are in general, but commercials is it, it can be very lucrative. And there are certain things that um, like you choose where you put your effort into. So I really want to do cartoons and video games and all that kind of stuff. And I'm in that world because of motion capture. But most of my work has been in commercials. And that's where I've made most of my money in voice acting. And I'm starting to get into e-learning, which I really, really enjoy. Um, and that's also really lucrative and but it's also a means to an end eventually cartoons is is what I really have a passion for what I want to be working in but I always will be doing cartoon or commercials because I I also really enjoy those so um it, it just depends there are so to answer your question yes it can be very lucrative um when it's done correctly and you're not chasing just one thing you're you're diversifying um and just knowing kind of where to put it's it's all about economizing effort is making sure you really know where to put your effort in order to get the maximum yield. Depending on what you want to do. I mean, you just named so many things, cartoons, commercials, e-learning, um, book the the um the books on tape or whatever mm -hmm. there are, you know, as audible fans. And then but you said video games. You don't even think of that. But you know, because as a gamer, as I am not, I, I mm -hmm. don't, but they're they have voices. Oh, yeah. You never think that, oh, yeah, this is somebody's thing. And dubbing, you know, if you're a fan <laughs> Ooh, of yeah. foreign films or if you're a fan of anime, most of us are, yeah. those things are dubbed into English. Yeah. And I absolutely love those. Anime, getting into dubbing anime and foreign films is, I, it's one that I actually haven't broken into much yet. It's, and, but it's very high on my list because I really enjoy that aspect of things. Um, living overseas, I have a fascination with um, with that culture, um, and so I really enjoy. That's something that I very much want to be. Um, that's uh, that's on my list of goals for my next steps is to get to the point where I'm dubbing a lot of foreign um, foreign yeah. media. I, th I just think that sounds so neat. So you you said you're doing commercials right now. What is one of your favorite commercials that you've done? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I've done some really weird commercials. I've done. Um, Wow, my favorite. So I would say some of my favorite ones are ones that I really enjoy. Um, like the a lot of the commercials I do are done kind of in a vacuum. I'm sent the scripts, I'm given the specs, and then I record them, and and that's it. But my favorite ones are ones that I are that are all directed sessions. I really enjoy working with a director, working in a studio, whatever it may be. And so the ones that I had that come spring most um, readily to mind is ones that are that I um, that I didn't expect to get. And it was last minute, had to go to a studio and get them recorded. And um, so I've done several for places in and around El Paso that I really enjoyed that were that kind of situation. Ones that are a little bit more um, a, that had a little bit bigger market here in Denver. Um, and then also just some absolutely bizarre ones um for like toy like toys like foreign toys that like really small very strange and so um but yeah anyone's any ones that I can work with people I, that's what I really enjoy I enjoy working with with directors with other voice actors and so anyone that I can go into the studio and do those are my favorite that's that's kind of neat and so do you also work with other voice actors or people who are interested in becoming voice actors do you do that as well or do you stay strictly with your craft? You just do your thing. No, it's I I really enjoy sharing knowledge. I, I think I really enjoy the aspect or the prospect of helping people. It's just I haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to do that. But it is something that I would absolutely love to do. If anyone was interested, I would be more than happy to help give any advice or share any knowledge or give any types of coaching if if I feel qualified to do that. I don't know if I quite am, but it's um but yeah, I really enjoy helping people. It's it's something that I think um I I like the camaraderie that comes with voice acting and it's a very opening and welcoming community and I would love to help foster that however I could. Now see y'all, he just gave you all an in. So anybody <laughs> who is watching 
who has a heart's desire or at least an interest in becoming a voice actor, y'all need to reach out. Garrett, yeah. where can people find you? Yeah, the best place that you can find me is um, I have my website, GarrettThompsonVO.com, um, or you can email me at Garrett at GarrettThompsonVO.com. And um, that is that is where kind of my main repository of emails go. So that would be the best place to um, to reach me at. All right. You guys heard it here first. You guys can reach him out, reach out to him. He wants to be a coach. And yes, he's qualified. And don't don't worry if you didn't get his information. It's all going to be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe and share our information with your network. Um, Garrett, my friend. Yes. Before I let you go, we have yes. to play a game. OK. All right. So this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, my friend, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Here we go. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Read the book or see the movie? Oh, gosh. Um, if they're paying me, read the book. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Wallflower or life of the party? Wallflower. Really? I'm a little really. I'm, I'm, I think. I'm very much a learned extrovert. I, I, my natural inclination is introversion. I like, led, like watching things happen. But when I need to be the life of the party, I absolutely can be. But right. naturally, like nature versus nurture, very much staying on the outskirts. That's hilarious. Okay. Summertime fun or winter wonderland? I like winter. Well, you are in Denver. I am. It's true. It's been freezing. <laughs> Get there, sir. Eat to live or live to eat? Oh, I live to eat. I love food. So much. <laughs> Out in nature or in the house? Oh, I'm a, I'm a homebody. Okay, wait, you just went from, I love winter, I live in Denver, but I want to stay in the house. Yeah, that's that's where the fire is. That's where the hot cocoa is. And I get to watch the beautiful snow coming down for, through the window, but not have to be cold. It's it's the best of both worlds. Loving it. I hear you completely. Coke or Pepsi? Um, Pepsi. All right. Drive the car or ride in the car? If I ooh, drive the car, drive the car. Okay. All right. Is there a little bit of um stuff going on there that we need to talk about or you I, I hate parking so if any so if it's somewhere where I'm not comfortable parking or like having to go downtown then absolutely ride just so I can avoid parking but in general I like driving I like being in control okay there it is y'all the control issue all right I like sports or I don't care I don't care all righty and finally what was your first job my first job um Oh gosh, it was um. Ugh, what was my first job? I'm I'm I, so something about me is I'm a major like as my mom would describe a signer upper. I just like to try <laughs> new joiner. things. I'm a big joiner, and so um so I've done a lot of like little things here and there. Um, but probably my first like regular paying job was as a um quartet musician. Okay. Um, in high school, I played in quartets in and around the city. Um, so like weddings, corporate events, whatever it was, um, played viola for those. And that would that's probably the first uh, like official job that I had. That is so neat. And because you're from El Paso, tell us what high school you went to. Coronado. All right. So all you Coronado fans out there, there's your alumni. Garrett, Absolutely. thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it, sir. Oh, it was my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. If you or someone you know has an inspiring story, an engaging topic, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, make sure you go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us a message. We really want to hear from you. So that's it for this time, y'all. But don't worry. We'll be back next week for more Faith on Friday Presents.